Hello, good evening everyone. Uh, welcome to the Eurogen webinar program. My name is Michelle Batty and I'm the manager of the European Reference Network that deals with rare urogenital diseases and complex conditions called Eurogen. Eurogen is one of 24 different reference networks which all cover different medical fields. They were created by the European Commission in 2017 and they all deal with patients with rare uh, diseases or complex conditions that need highly specialised healthcare. The aim for us as a European reference network is to try to, try to deliver faster specialist evaluation and more equitable access to high quality diagnosis, treatment and care for all those patients with rare urogenital diseases or complex conditions. So what kind of activities do we do? Well, we have a uh, IT system called the Clinical Patient Management System, which allows us to conduct virtual uh, European level MDT uh, meetings, uh, which allow advice to be sent by the experts working in our network to any healthcare professional in any EU country that would like advice on a particularly rare or complex case. So please do get in touch uh, if you'd like to discuss a particular case, we'd be delighted to help. We also collaborate in education and training activities such as this webinar. And we're also building a Eurogen registry, which I'm delighted to say went live this year. So very soon uh, we'll have 57 healthcare providers, hopefully if they all join, contributing to that registry. So very quickly we expect to have quite a large uh, data set on the patients with rare diseases and complex conditions. Um, so that's enough about Eurogen. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, another European uh, initiative um, and it's really because uh, obviously both the ERN and uh, uh, ELISA's initiative are, are, share, uh, are both funded by the European Commission. Uh, so it's really nice to promote knowledge and disseminate uh, knowledge about each other's activities. Uh, so ELISA is uh, running a European project called Share for Rare. Uh, she is the patient engagement research group in the San Juan de Dé uh, Barcelona Children's Hospital in Spain. Uh, and it's a European project which she'll tell us all about, how you can participate in it. It's mainly patient-centred, but it's also of interest to healthcare professionals um, and researchers. Uh, so without further ado, Elisa, thank you so much for doing this this evening, and we'd be delighted to hear from you. Uh, good evening, everybody. I would like to say again, thank you very much for the organisation, for letting me be here today and for all the support and dissemination of this activity. Today I'm going to talk to you about uh, share for rare which is a project of citizen science uh, based on data donation to boost research in rare diseases. Uh, share for rare is a collaborative digital research platform for people with rare diseases and the caregivers and families but it's much more than a research tool because their patients can First of all, find rigorous and accessible information about health, share experiences in a safe community and meet peers with the same conditions, participate in activities and participate in research. If you have a look at the public layer at share for rare uh, you can find that we have already medical books about rare diseases. These medical books uh, were created by experts and were reviewed by groups of patients to be sure that language was accessible. Also, we have a toolkit for patient advocacy, which can be of interest for patients, caregivers, and also patient organizations. And also we have a guide of uh, pediatric palliative care for chronic conditions. If you want to know about, more about the project or what are we doing, you can also follow our blog, which is also in the public layer, where we share news and interviews to the research group who are conducting research as a for rare and personal experiences and testimonials about living with rare conditions. In the public layer are listed all the research projects where patients and caregivers can participate and upon registration they gain access. Here you can see how the dashboard looks like and when you register 
to a project, you can always find the banner with a direct link to that study. And how does uh, this research tool uh, look like? Well, I would like to say that it was conceived for patients, uh, by patients for patients, because the main aim is to incorporate patient perspective in research. So what kind of studies you can find uh, at Shurforen? We can develop patient registries, also uh, studies that want to do a research to study the symptoms of a determinate condition, or for example, the, um, the impact of the, of the symptoms or the satisfaction with the treatments. We are doing one right now about vascular anomalies. Also, we have been, we have been doing a study right now about effects in quality of life. Also, the tool is um, a good option to validate scales. We also perform studies to, uh, to study deeper the natural history, for example, of rare pediatric tumors, and also to study the burden of the disease, for example, in, in undiagnosed patients. So how does this uh, research tool looks like? It was designed mobile first, meaning that was conceived first uh, to fit uh, small screens like the mobile phone and later to bigger screens. Also, it will always display one question per screen, trying to be the friendliest user experience as possible. During the registration, uh, there is implemented this digital informed consent to facilitate and speed up the, the participation of patients in research. And uh, I would like to highlight that the user always owns the data. And if by any case, this data can be of interest to any other project, we have implemented the option of free consent if this is needed. Also, uh, our experience told us that sometimes when you are doing things online, no, users maybe can have some doubts. These doubts arise and you need to have an, as fast as possible an answer. So what we implemented, these super options, the patient always has the possibility to say that doesn't have the information right now that really maybe don't want to answer, that none of these options applies to his condition. So it displays a text box or maybe uh, if any kind of doubt appears, arises, they can send us immediately a question and if we can, the managed team uh, answers it. And if not, we reply this question to the research team involved to give an answer as soon as possible. The platform is very flexible. It was uh, conceived to implement validated scales in a friendly way, but also uh, personal, personalized service can be implemented because, as all you know, maybe better than me, not all the validated scales are, are fit uh, perfect with all the conditions, so we have the possibility to do personalized surveys for determined studies. But we also have uh, a validated scales library available to facilitate the implementation of the studies and to speed up this process. And what we consider that it's very important about the platform is that language sometimes can be a barrier. So we have um, now the platform in four languages, uh, English, French, Spanish and Romanian, but we can implement any language. It's a, it's a, a, a tool that we can implement just under request, its possibility to translate to any language. And also what we consider that it's really important is that the user that it's uh, giving us their time uh, needs to have something in return for the time invested. So we implemented a system that the user has an immediate feedback. Uh, the platform, when the user finishes the survey, shows and displays these anonymized charts with the accumulated results from all the study and are updated daily. This means that every day you can see the evolution and how you are uh, in comparison to the other users that are answering. And we have uh, dedicated um, slots 
to guide the users and to support them because we know about the digital gap and not that everybody has the same digital skills. So sometimes a digital platform is not easy for everyone. So we implemented uh, these time slots, this user day every week. So we can schedule calls or video calls to facilitate the participation in research for all the users. I said previously that uh, Chef Forward was more than a research tool, and it's because we have a community uh, inside, a safe space where users can ask any question that they want. It's mainly a questions and answer forum. And again, we don't want that uh, language is a barrier. So we have implemented this multi-language automatic translation. So any questions or answer can be translated immediately to any language. But also the platform has an artificial intelligence algorithm that shows the more relevant, the most relevant questions according to the information provided to the users. So um, the user can see uh, the more related questions to them. And uh, in the private menu is the people like me map. Again, the artificial intelligence algorithm of the platform processes all the information provided during registrations and makes calculations according to three dimensions, which are the diagnosis, if the user had it, if not, it calculates the symptoms introduced by the user, and also the location. And with this, displays to the user what you can see in the screen, which is this map of connections and the list of the most related users. So if those users have activated receiving private message, messages, uh, you can, well, they can interact and establish contact and maybe support each other. But also because we at Share for Her, we go together closer with the patient organizations. Patient organizations can have a profile at Share for Her, and users that maybe don't know them can contact. But also the people like MeMap shows the list of relevant patient organizations. And always there is this link to contact them to facilitate this uh, link among the patients and the patients' organizations. This uh, people like me map is also updated daily. So if, um, if for example, somebody asks us to make a call in social media for people with a, a specific condition, uh, with these daily updates, can show you if there is uh, new users with a, a similar condition. And what are we doing now? Which are our next steps? Uh, now we launch a study about health-related quality of life in rare diseases. Uh, we will uh, disseminate results uh, during rare disease day next Monday, and mainly uh, want to study aspects eight items related with the quality of life with people living with rare diseases. And uh, coming soon, we also have. Uh, this new study that I really would like to encourage you to prescribe and if you have some doubts you can ask uh, the management team with anything. It's coming soon. It will be a 15-minute survey because we would like to study how is the vaccination process in people with rare diseases, if there have been uh, problems uh, accessing the vaccination, and we would like to study the infection scores and the evolution in people with rare diseases. And this is more or less all about the project and the platform. And if somebody in the audience has any questions, I will happily answer all of them. Thank you, Alisa. Yeah, if I give people next to you, uh, want any questions, please let us know. Um, so just while we're waiting, um, I'll say, yeah, uh, as usual, this will be recorded, so it'll be available on our go to web through our go to webinar and also on our YouTube channel. Uh, from tomorrow once we have to <laughs> just edit out a little, little beginning bits and things like that so um we'll send a link to everybody who registered tomorrow um with the with those links on um also to everybody who's if anybody's here for the first time uh please check out our the eurogen website um that has a link to all our webinars forthcoming webinars on it um it'll show you the titles for all of 2022 that we have at the moment and some of them will be open for registration so please have a look at that. Um, yeah, and I think uh, we've got ones coming up basically weekly for the foreseeable future. So um, 
so no questions at the moment. So I think um, mm -hmm. it's good minutes. Um, so, oh, here we go. So on this, I'll send this on to you. Uh, I'll just read it out to you, uh, Alisa, if that's okay. Um, so is registration or membership available to countries outside of the EU? For example, the UK is a, being asked the answer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Share for Red is a, a global platform. We have users from all over the world, and mainly it's well, uh, it's in English and Spanish, and some studies are translated to um, French and Romanian. But registration is open to anybody in the world who has a computer and internet. So I would like to encourage all the people who wants to join and contact peers that join Share for Red, and if. Uh, is somebody listening that has a very particular condition and once and there is nobody in the platform with it we can make a call in our social media to help to reach some other families in the same situation okay excellent that's good to know um it's interesting actually because we have um uh, for our audience for our webinars although uh, the network itself is uh, within the european union um, a lot, a large percentage of our uh, viewers for our webinars are actually outside of the EU. Yeah. Um, so actually, hopefully, there will be viewers for our YouTube channel, so they will be able to kind of see this and hopefully pass it on. So it's good to know. Um, yeah, it's okay. Anybody other questions? Um, people can minutes just to type anything else in. Um, I think. Um, I just would like to add if anybody has any questions, maybe tomorrow or, or any other day, please keep my email and you can and you can stay in touch and we can talk about anything you need about the project or to make any call or the medical books. Anything you would like to know a little bit more, feel free to write us and we will answer as soon as we can. Yeah, you're okay for us to any messages we get, you're okay for us to pass them on to you, straight on to you, Alicia. Yeah? So, Sorry? It's okay for us to pass any messages on yeah yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. We'll put your email address if that's okay in the um, in the email we'll send out with the registration link so people can contact you directly. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so a question from David in the UK. So he says, I am a penile cancer survivor in the UK. How do I make a start on this? So I guess it's kind of what's his first steps. So uh, if I understood, you would like to know how to uh, uh, register a search for that? I think that's it, yes. I think that's, that's yeah. it. Yeah, so just go to, to the Share for Rare uh, website if you want. Let me share my screen again and you will see the, the yeah, still share URL. Yeah. And, you can, and you can just register, re register there. Registration is a three step process. We will ask you about your name, your email, your disease, and if you are the patient or the caregiver. And just we need, because we are GDPR compliant, if you want to interact in the community, we will ask you for a, a, an ID to uh, create your identity. And then you can uh, interact in the community. In 24 hours, you will have your people like me map if once you introduce your symptoms. And you can contact us. And if you have any doubts, you can write us and we will help. Or we can schedule a video call on Wednesday afternoon, if you prefer, as you want. Excellent. Yeah, what we'll do also do, yeah. So we'll, we'll put the um the e both the email and email address in uh, sorry, the website yeah. address tomorrow yeah. in email we sent to everybody. So you everybody have it will have it there if you didn't catch it from the end of the slides. Um I think it's I can't remember if we put it into the it might be in the description actually of the webinar as well in the, in the um I can't remember the call. Um okay, uh, any other questions? Anyone? I'll give you kind of say another 30 seconds or so, otherwise. So please do contact Lisa if you have any uh, other questions afterwards. Um, so I'll say while we're just waiting, I'll say thank you to everyone who for attending, um, and hopefully those who if anybody was attending for the first time, I hope you uh, found it useful. And mostly thank you to you, Elisa, as well for uh, presenting this today and let everybody know about Share for Air. Um, uh, it's yeah, much appreciated you taking the time to do this. So thank you, and. Um, yeah, we're going to know the question, so I think hopefully people will get in contact with you uh, later on, Lisa. So, so thank you to everybody, and all have a good evening, and I uh, hope to see you all soon. Thank you very much for everything. Have a good evening. Thank you.